Hi everyone, and welcome back to the third and final video in the Wildcat Ready Curriculum Vitae video tutorial. Again, my name is Dalton Langdon, Career Advisor for Science and Pre-Health students. Now that you have a better handle on the organization of your CV and have started writing your bullet points, we're going to discuss more in depth individual sections unique to CVs and how one might go about formatting their resume. So we have, again, individual sections and formatting. Now, much like we discussed in the previous video in step three, you want to strategically organize your information based on what you're applying to. With that said, I am going to cover sections typically found on a CV. Please note that this is not an exhaustive list, and I would highly encourage you to meet with either myself or your faculty advisor one-on-one -on -one to go over your CV as the sections on a CV can vary drastically from one academic area to another. Okay, we're first going to begin with research and lab experience. It is one of the most common sections to have on a CV. And if you've not yet had the opportunity to participate in a research experience, I encourage you to do so. Davidson has several different opportunities for you to participate. When placing research or lab experience on your CV, start with the experience title and the location, and you can see that here. So you'll have your experience title and then location, and then the position and then the dates. Remember, if it's going, if it's an ongoing experience, you're going to write it in the present tense, and if it's completed, you're going to write it in the past tense. Okay. So a bullet point might include the title or description of the research project or the literature review, depending on what you've done. And it's gonna to try, to, try to focus it on your contribution. You can also mention the supervisor or the mentor's name or their title, but really focus on the con contribution and the experience itself. So methods or techniques, software that you use, that can be really important. And then the length of it. So I get this question a lot, how many bullet points should I use? So I would steer clear of just having one bullet point up there because then it's kind of like a, well, why is it even up here? But the general rule of thumb, two to three, you can go up towards five or six, depending on how relevant the experience is or how in depth the experience was, how long the experience was. You're gonna hear me say this a lot, it depends. And that's why it's so important to me one-on-one -on -one with an advisor to really go over those details. And then we actually have an example here. So one of those research experiences might be DRI, the Davidson Research Initiative. You can see here the title, you were a research assistant, you worked with whoever your supervisor was to synthesize compounds that could have medicinal chemistry applications. So you're starting to get into the weeds of it. So this is what a really good experience would look like underneath a research or a lab experience section. Okay, so then this moves us into a clinical shadowing section, which is another fairly common uh, section to have for Davidson students, especially those who are applying to graduate or professional schools in medicine. Now, depending on your experience, you may have a separate section that's labeled clinical shadowing, pretty obvious, pretty standard. However, you may also nestle those clinical shadowing experiences under different sections, right? So maybe you haven't done that many and you need to add those with your other medical activities that you've done. So you may have like a medical activities and a service section, or you might have a relevant medical experience section, or maybe a, just a professional development section and you house all of your sort of professional development elements like shadowing underneath that section. Again, it all just truly depends and it's going to be unique to you and your experiences. Again, can't stress this enough. Meet with an advisor one-on-one -on -one to discuss through these details. Okay, so say you have multiple clinical shadowing and you want to list them all just in one place. You don't really want to focus on the experience itself, but just to showcase that you've done a lot of shadowing. So in that case, you might do it like this. So you have the clinical shadowing, the different locations that you've done, that you were an observer, the dates, and then you could just list those out. So having the, fish, the physician's name and then their title. So you have an example here. Now, if you wanted to really go in depth with these different shadowing experiences, then you might go the singular route. So you would have the clinical shadowing organization or the physician, the location, the shadowing experience itself, the date, and then you would go a little bit more in depth on the details. So moving back to that sort of context, the scope, the impact of the experience itself, what did you learn? Why is this important? Okay, 
So that's clinical shadowing in a nutshell, which then moves us into skills section. So this should definitely number among your CV sec your CV sections as it can quickly highlight all of your relevant skills in one singular place. Depending on the skills that you've developed and their relevance to the application, this particular section will probably fluctuate. And what I mean by that is that it may appear closer to the top or it may live at the bottom of your CV depending on the significance of the skills that you've developed, okay? So if you have a broad range of maybe unrelated skills, it's probably best to have just a generic skill section like you can see here. So generic skill section with a couple of the different subsections listed out underneath. So you have computer, you have languages, and then you go through and you just talk about those briefly. You list them out. But if instead you have more relevant skills or in-depth experiences within those skills, you may have uh, a more highlighted skill section, okay? So in this case, it's like technical skills or maybe it's laboratory skills. It really, it depends. Yet again, you're gonna hear me say that over and over again. So in this case, you have like computational and you've listed out all of these very specific computational skills that you've gained. Same with wet laboratory. All of these different skills that you've developed through your laboratory settings at Davidson. So that kind of takes care of your skill section. Now, one final section common to CVs is your publications and your presentation section. When citing publications you've authored or co-authored, it's best to stick with the preferred citation style of your discipline, either that's APA or MLA. Uh, so with that said, I do have a few key takeaways for you to keep in mind. So you want to make sure that you're listing your publications in reverse chronological order, so most recent to past. Put your name in bold to highlight your authorship. Really showcase that to people that are looking at your CV. You can put an asterisk on papers that you made a leading contribution to. Um, and then if you have things that are currently in the works, you can put those on a CV. Typically, we try to steer away from putting those feature things, but with publications, you are able to have like that works in progress that showcases it's something that you've been working on and that it is in fact in the works, okay? So we have an example of that here. So you can take a look at that. And that moves us into presentations too. So presentations, these are probably papers that you have presented at a conference or at something like a Vernon case here at Davidson. It really, it just depends. Again, it depends. Um, but you always want to make sure that you're including the title of the paper, the name of the conference, uh, the dates and the location. Pretty standard. And again, you want to format your presentations using the writing style of the field. And you can see two different examples here. Um, of what that might look like. So take a gander at that. All right, so that essentially wraps up the Wildcat Ready curriculum Vitae video tutorial. I hope that you found this to be informative. Um, for more in-depth guidance, please schedule an appointment and we can go over your CV one-on-one. -on -one. All right, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.